Greetings, kindly old Dr. Johnson, your learning guide as you put together your presentation. This could be a presentation related to an online webinar, a YouTube, or an in-person presentation. Some tips. First of all, you want to have a title page of some sort. Title there, your name, probably grade and school there would be uh, effective as well. You decide if you want to have a picture for the title page. I like to have a picture of some sort. But start with having an overview, an advanced organizer that, sh that just shows the outline of what you're presenting. This was for a webinar, lasted about 50 minutes. Yours will maybe have anywhere from three to six sections at the most. But let the audience see what you'll be covering and tell them in this session, I'll be covering blank, 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 and blank, so they know what to expect. That structure. And notice how I have the headings here, and I'm using, you know, I'm using uh, 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 Roman numerals. You know, you decide what you want to use, but I tend to use Roman numerals and then uh, numbers, one, two, three, and four. It just simply allows the audience to see the main ideas, where you're going, and creates that structure. And I differentiate the titles of each section. I like to have caps and boldface or different sorts of print. I have them centered each section so you can see the structure. And then the points I am saying are flush left. Now, they're not complete sentences, so I don't put periods at the end. I try to create short abbreviated sentences. And I'm speaking with my notes. Uh, so I have a copy of my notes in front of me, whether I'm speaking in person or online. So I'm not reading verbatim. Nothing is worse than somebody just read. Well, there are things worse, but reading from their notes. You want to give this sense of spontaneity. Remember, the words are used not to transmit ideas, but to hold ideas. These pictures, I simply do a Google search, student writing, get a bunch of pictures, and I put a picture there that illustrates the point I'm trying to get across. Thus, I am communicating with the words, the pictures, and my faith. Yes, you do. It's easier to keep your audience engaged if they see a head. That's why I include my bald little head here. It's hard to pay attention to a disembodied voice, a voiceover. This is a picture my brother sent me of his daughter, his writing. You can take pictures and include pictures of your own, but find something it becomes multimodal that way. And again, and this is another picture from my brother, illustrates the point I was trying to make. This is a Google page I just copied and pasted. Now, I have found it more effective to sometimes include one idea per slide. That creates more a sense of movement as I'm talking. So then I, I describe or I expound on each of these. And again, not a complete sentence, hold the idea, no ending period, and see what works for you. As well, when you speak, you modulate your voice up and down, pauses, dramatic effect. Don't be afraid to be and become passionate if you believe in it strongly. Pauses are good sometimes. And there's a tendency, I know, to go too fast, especially if you're a little nervous. Slow down. Slow down. And I say that to myself all the time. I drink far too much coffee. Try to be as natural sounding as you can. And again, one idea per slide. However, I'm going to break that rule in just a minute. Section two, you see the idea. 
Here's a picture of a book that used to illustrate this. Donald Graves was one of the first writers to talk about the five-step writing process. I'm going to talk about each one of these. Notice how I use numbers, Roman numerals. You decide what you want to use, but create the structure. Numbers helps the audience see the structure. Idea one, idea two, idea three. If you don't want to use numbers, use bullets to identify the main headings. But I like to use numbers, and I hate the automatic numbering function because the, uh, the uh, margins usually get all messed up. Now, I had to make a decision here on the five steps. You notice this is a subsection of that section differentiated caps, uh, 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 italics, different color, step one, and then I'm creating, you know, I had to make the decision, I thought for this, it makes more sense to have more than one idea because I'm talking about drafting and they can see it. And you'll need to make that decision. But generally, notice how I got this picture I'm talking about the revision process and drafting, like putting a lump of clay on the editor's, on the potter's wheel. Simply found pictures on the web to illustrate. To illustrate. All right. Those are the tips that I have for you. I'm trying to keep this short. I want you to focus on your outline and putting together your presentation. Use each other as uh, uh, resources. Don't be afraid to schedule or call me for an individual conference if you need. Always picture your audience. Who is your audience? What do they need to know? What don't they need to know? In a presentation, what you don't include is just as important as what you do include. Now, I'll, I'll talk about one last thing, background. Usually, when I do a, a recorded presentation, I go to Zoom Classroom, and they have nice backgrounds there, so you don't need to see my wall and my bulletin board there. Just looks a little uh, more professional. I go to that Zoom Classroom, and I have a background, and then I use Screencast-O-Matic. And that records what is on the screen. So I just press the record what's on the screen, and I'd show you this, but I can't. And then I use the picture from the Zoom. And I know that's kind of complicated, but consider your background as well if you know how to do that.